Al Stauk, Gannon's father, capital F A T H E R. Last name Stauk. S T A U C H. I'm going to start with um, something from my wife, not to go out of order, but she yep. didn't think she could make it through it. So this is my wife, Melissa, and these are her words. Some may say or think that I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Tisha. In part, that may be accurate, and I would be okay with that, because then Gannon would still be here. I, too, know the pain of losing a child. There is no greater pain. We are now lifelong grief partners, as this is a lifelong journey of pain with two sons waiting for us in heaven. <sighs> I have some words from my daughter, Elena, I will uh, address in the middle of my speech, but they're written in yellow, so I don't know if I should leave it to a child. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever God may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of the wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The poem I read is named Invictus, translated from the Latin means unconquerable. I quoted this same poem at Gannon's Memorial here in Colorado Springs back in August of 2020. Why August of 2020? When his body was ripped to shreds on January 27th? Well, as we heard testimony to, his body was found 1,370 miles away. And then the process to identify his maggot-infested remains was held in from us until July 2020. <sighs> As I stated in my testimony on the stand, Gannon was support, born severely premature and barely filled my two hands the first time I held him. At the end of his life, after his body was cremated into a pile of ashes, he was ultimately no bigger than the first time I held him. As brutal as the weight became, I'm thankful to God and the bridge workers for finding him and returning his precious body to Landon and I. I quote the poem Invictus again, not to boast of my strength and perseverance, Your Honor, but to say to the world, I alone can control my actions and reactions. Your Honor, I refuse to allow anger to poison my soul and orient my life to a pursuit of vengeance. I refuse to allow pain to carry me through each day and promote the pursuit of medicinal retribution toward the offender. I refuse also to let my mind be clouded by inconsistency and emotions that deter me from the purpose in this life. You honor the price I pay each and every day for this resolve is to only get pieces and parts of my son. It consistently through time. But the pain is too heavy, and the anger too overwhelming, and the desire for vengeance too vexing. Instead, each and every day I pursue peace. I seek joy in my life and let the love I have for my wife and family flow in and out of me like a mighty wave. As I told Tisha regularly at the end of our relationship, my joy is mine alone and she cannot rob me of that. I will learn to experience G more and more as time goes on, but as I did my best to instill into his precious soul, love, joy, service, and kindness are the pathway to take in life. This picture shows that in the fourth grade, he already had a mind for service. Throughout these past three years since Gannon was beaten and drugged, carved up, shot at point blank range and discarded like yesterday's garbage, I've encountered many people that would figuratively do the same to me. I've been questioned, compared as Tisha did to my abusive father, and ridiculed for, for my approach to finding Gannon. I hope now that the world has seen that I was signed the most arduous task of finding Gannon in the only place that was possible for him to have, by, have been in the mind of a killer.
Were my efforts fruitful? I believe so. But from the moment I did not see the Volkswagen Tiguan, Tiguan, or however you say it, at French Elementary on that Tuesday evening, a clear direction for finding Gannon pointed directly and precisely at Tisha. While others online, some who are even in the courtroom today, questioned my perceived lack of effort or concern, I stood still and stood firm in knowing that only one person had the information needed to find Gannon. Now I say woe to the person who questions a father's resolve when the safety and well-being of his children are at stake. I did not waver. I did not falter in the pursuit, nor did I allow the mentality of the mob to shake me. But it was only by the grace of God that Gannon's precious body was finally found. In Mark 4.39 of the Bible, in the middle of a storm, Christ arose and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. In times of trial in my life, from seeing my father being taken away in handcuffs, to seeing that sweet one-pound, six-ounce baby boy for the, my firstborn son being put into a Ziploc bag after he was born to help regulate his body temperature, and now searching for and never finding my son again, I have but one choice, and that is the times of trial and tribulation to have that peace and be still. As I alluded to previously, that stillness does, stillness does provide an easy target for many who do not understand peace, hope, and even faith. Some, including Tisha, feasted on my stillness, attack, and yes, left several scars. One of these scars comes in the form of the financial and residential ruin that began in the early days of this video. I'm just gonna skip this part because I don't wanna make this any more about me. I'm not seeking any restitution, Your Honor. For the dollar fifty a month I received from the defendant, Tisha, would just keep me connected to her for the rest of my life, and I don't want that. So absolutely no restitution, Your Honor. The murderer of which I speak was not always such. When I met Tisha, she was beautiful, extremely intelligent, as many have testified to, and a seemingly successful woman. A far cry from the nappy-headed, murderous, narcissistic, and arrogantly flippant human being that sits in our midst today. Having a background in teaching, social work, higher education, certified babysitting, and endless amount of credentials, that should render one trustworthy when it relates to the safety of children. However, although, the remain, although she remains too much a coward to state the facts of what she did to Gannon, too much a lily-livered, self-centered, pathological liar to ask for forgiveness, and too much the facade of one who actually cares for others to have taken her frustration out on an adult or one who could defend themselves, she will one day give an account through her words or through her time. Singing pictures of Gannon sleeping to Landon and I was telling, as the boy looked pale and absent of the energies that so defined him, this is what a happy, healthy little boy looks like when he's sleeping in the next picture. That's what a little boy sleeping looks like. These pictures on the screen are of a happy, healthy little boy that's sleeping sweetly, healthily where he lay. The impact Tisha had as a result of this heinous crime stretches far wider and far deeper than I could depict through my statement today. Two other people torn to pieces as a result of this are Gannon's sister, Lena, and Harley. Speaking of Harley, I feel as though as I've lost two children as a result of this tragedy, one of which I will never see on this earth again, and the other which I do not know if a relationship can be salvaged with. Now for Lena. The video you saw as, as submitted in evidence, her bebopping down the street is actually an excellent depiction of Lena and her happiness and her joy in life. She is very loving, trusting, and at times way too social. Normally, you might be concerned by your little girl talking to the utility guy working in the front yard, but in this case, it was the inside of her own home that was of grave concern. Nonetheless, her loss, Lena's loss, is like none I can even imagine. She lost her big brother, her only brother at the time. I still do not know if she has fully processed or fully understands the gravity of the situation, but regardless, has pressed forward and is thriving as best as she can. I am so proud of her. And these are her words. Once again, they're in yellow, so I'll do the best I can. And this is what I asked her if she wanted to say anything to Tisha, and this is what she said in her sweetest mind that she has, that you do, do, that you do not do that to people, especially your stepkids, and that it is never all right to do these things. How sweeter of a response can you get? Now for my precious, premature firstborn son, Get it? I never in my wildest dreams would have ever thought you'd be in danger, buddy, or I'd, 
No, I wouldn't have not left you. At home with what turned out to be your murderer and the last person to ever see you on this earth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Through a father's eyes, children are truly a gift from God and among the best and most perfect creations God can make. Your Honor, I do need to clear one thing up with the defense. It was said both in the opening statement and in the closing, somehow Ganon has been compared to a demon. And I understand the process. I do. But if they want to take the case up of Ganon being a demon, I will line people up from Alaska to Denver to Colorado Springs all the way to South Carolina to testify against them. Ganon was nobody's demon. I don't care how much anyone was abused or anything. He was not anyone's demon. Oh, okay. Gana was truly... Oh. Gana was truly my buddy. Very recently before he died, the most alarming thing he did was call me dad. Up until age 10 or 11, I was daddy. But in the last months of his life, I was just dad. A signal that he was coming into those junior high pre-teenage years. Another amazing thing that is he finally started asking me regularly to play ball with him. He was never too much into sports for most of his life, but that last six to nine months, he really started enjoying playing ball. Some of the most memorable times were him running little five-yard football routes in the street in front of our house. Most of the time, he dropped the ball, but he kept asking, let's do it again. I almost had it that time, Daddy. Oh, and that Nintendo Switch. One of the most difficult pieces of evidence to give up was his Nintendo is that it probably has the most of him on it. Knowing I may never see that again is truly devastating. For him, many of his games were not just games, but a challenge to overcome, as I made him beat specific games before I would buy him the next one. I remember not long before he died, him beating the old school Zelda game he had. As he felt he was getting close to beating the final monster, he paused it, ran upstairs, and we sat at the kitchen island, and he beat, he beat it right there together with me. He was as excited as I ever saw him. With all of that and all of the pain of only being able to see him play through the one YouTube video he was able to make, which I'm about to play, I can sleep in peace at night because the father I am and the son he is was culminated as always in our final embrace as he ran out of arms and downstairs to watch Pokemon, I in his heart and he in mine. If we could try to play that video, just maybe the first 10 or 15 seconds of it. Hey guys, and today I'm I'm about to play some Sonic Mania. Alright, let's zoom in. And yes, cameraman is right here. Drop a cell on white gaming. And yes, sign up for our channels. We're going to be doing a lot of these together. Give the shout out to him, his channel. Freedom! Thank you. I was one of the many he hoped to make and the only one he was actually able to make. I do want to add something that I don't have in my speech that um, me and Landon already had a conversation about this and I owe her an apology as well as she already gave me one that we allow Tisha to manipulate us into some of the pain and disagreements that we had between one another. And I, Landon, I'm sorry. But I will say this, Tisha was not the glue to keep everything together. She was not the answer. And this is not a jab, Landon, okay? But Le Lena still lives with me. Tisha, you were not the answer. Now, Your Honor, if I have any influence on the final sentence for Tisha, first I ask to be stripped of my last name immediately. It's nauseating and infuriating to hear her called Miss Stout this past three years. Secondly, I ask that for every mile 
She drove, drove Gannon across the country. She spent one day in solitary confinement. I think that take us in between three and four years. After that journey is complete, I recommend her sentence be equal to every year she stripped off of Gannon's life, which for the average male in America right now is 77. So that would give her 66 more years in addition to the 11 he lived. Lastly, for every year of Harley's life that she abusively manipulated that child, she should have an additional year of prison. That adds 21 years to the total. I think without parole, that should suffice. I pray also that Tisha lives the fullest and happiest life that any inmate possibly can live. I also pray that every night before she falls asleep, her last breath before she drifts off sounds just like the breath that she describes Gannon breathing as life left his body. And that all through her sleep, she dreams of all the fun they had at Disney and other places we went throughout our time together. And that every morning as she is about to wake, the end of the, her dream, the last words Gannon spoke to her screamed or cried, Tisha, stop. You're hurting me. Why, Tisha? Daddy, help me. I want my mommy. Why couldn't you let her just be a mama's boy? That's all he wanted to be. He just loved his mama. I wish you would tell me what those words were so I would know. And then as she speaks those words, the sound of a gunshot goes off and she wakes. Every day and night I pray she relives just those moments. And then wakes up to a nice, warm, and kosher breakfast. In conclusion, I would like to share a picture of Gannon in his final state and find a rest resting place and thank everyone that has had a positive impact on my family and I, to everyone that has shared the positive impact Gannon has had on your life, from a proud and broken father, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I'd like to pause until we can get that last photo up. Not getting a feed from your laptop. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Oh, there it is. There it is. Thank you, everyone.